everyone and welcome to episode 6 of FM21 Beta Battle with me, the United City FM. Welcome along. So what I would say about FM21 so far is it's an amazing improvement on what we've had before. But if you get your tactics spot on and your team selection right, you can get some fantastic results. However, if you get them wrong in any way, shape or form, you absolutely get punished at the level of football that we're playing at. Southampton, I'm looking at you. It wasn't the best of days. Anyway, other than that, we're doing pretty well. Today, we've got Fulham in the Premier League. So let's get into today's episode and see how we get on. Welcome back to Leeds United and welcome back to the beta battle. We are sitting in seventh position, which is pretty good going, absolutely. At 15 matches gone and we've got uh, 23 points, so we're doing okay. A couple of wins recently, but just there you will notice that we've got a loss. And we might need to talk about that one because it was quite a big loss. But anyway, before we go any further, um, if you're new to the channel, welcome along. I know this is the beta series, so we often get new guys and girls coming and having a look. So welcome to my United City community. It's great to have you with us, the more the merrier. Um, if you want to join the United City community, there's a couple of ways you can do it. One, subscribe here, and that will keep you up to date with the videos that I put out. Two, I've now got a Discord called United City Community. Come and join us. It's in the uh, description below. The, uh, there's a load of links there, along with Patreon and Twitter and merchandise and other things. So go and check it all out, but come and join the Discord and make that community better by your presence in it. Uh, the more that we can get involved in that, the better it's going to be. So come and give us a look and uh, check out how we're, we're going on Discord. But yeah, other than that, subscribe to the channel here and keep up to date with the videos. Click a like on this particular episode for me. That helps me get seen by lots of other people. But now it's absolutely time to talk about what happened against Southampton. Oh dear, oh dear, is the simple response. Last episode, we had a nil-nil draw against Villa. Wasn't a particularly inspiring game, but they were sitting fourth at the time, and we were like in eighth or ninth, and so it wasn't a bad result in actual fact. But immediately after it came this game, and the problem that we had, and this is why I said in the introduction, if you get your tactics or your team selection wrong, you'll get found out, is my fullbacks needed a rest. Both Dallas and Ailing were absolutely dead and were needing a rest. So I had to take them both out. So Jan, uh, Janma and Davis came in. And look at that, 6.3 and 6.4. And Southampton absolutely pasted us in the fullback areas. They attacked it with a couple of different people either side of the pitch. Uh, absolutely overran them and a lot of the goals came specifically from Jan Matt's right hand side as we look at it and it wasn't a particularly good performance which is why Ailing came in in the second half I don't even know if uh, Jan Matt lasted the first half to be honest I think I subbed him at about 35 minutes but by that time we were already 3-0 down I think it was and it was a real uphill struggle from there but in the end, in the second half, we came back, we changed the shape a little bit, moved it all around, and we did better and got a couple of goals back. But still, 5-2 in the Premier League, not a good result. And this is what I'm saying. If you get it wrong, it's really, really hard to get anything from these games in the Premier League. But follow that up with a couple of other Premier League wins against Burnley and then against Everton and Everton were doing okay at the time they've dropped a little bit since but they're sitting in 11th now they were slightly higher than that at the time and we did pretty well against both of those sides now it was quite narrow wins one goal margin in it but we looked better than we had for a while especially in the Everton game scoring a couple of goals uh, Pizzini getting a couple and Costa getting the other one sandwiched in that of course we had our quarter final um, in the Carabao Cup against Arsenal and if, unfortunately, in the end, we came out with a 1-0 loss. It was a game there that we managed to stifle them. We were at home, so I was hoping for better slightly. But we stifled them through most of the game. And then they got a, a, a goal and we just couldn't find a way to turn up the temperature on them and get anything back. And therefore, we went out of the Carabao Cup at the quarterfinal stage. Slightly disappointing, but there's no doubting that Arsenal are a decent side. 
And I don't think it's any huge um, disgrace to lose to them 1-0. But in the end, that was our cup run in the Carabao Cup. And you can see that we've been drawn against Brighton in the FA Cup, which is a tricky draw. And it means that coming up, we've got a double header against them and they've already caused us problems earlier in the season. So that's going to be an interesting one. But today, it's all about Fulham. And Fulham, let's go and check out, uh, they're sitting in 16th position. So a reasonably good side for us to be playing at the back end of this calendar year, just as we reach the halfway point of the season, roughly. Um, so a decent opponent. But we've got to be on our metal and actually show up and show that we can dominate this sort of game, just like we did in the last couple in the Premier League against Burnley and Everton. So you can see that we've got a couple of injury issues, but they're mostly periphery members of the squad. Uh, Struick and Alioski are both out with a, a, a bit of a knock and won't feature today, but they probably wouldn't have anyway. The, the reason that this guy, uh, Struick, is rated so highly in terms of his average ratings is he played three games for us, but they've all been quite easy games in the in the Carabao Cup early on in that competition. And we played well, and that's why he's, he's doing OK there. But he doesn't quite have the same attribute level as our other three central defenders. So he doesn't get an awful lot of game time. But anyway... So he's out, and so is Alioski, who hasn't played for a little while and didn't play particularly well when he did. So, yeah, no great loss there particularly. So those two are out, and the only other one that's got a slight knock is Rafina, but he's on the bench and may come on if we need him to. Everybody else is reasonably fit. The one player that I am going to take out for this game is Click, and I'm going to put um, Wilshire in that role just because um, Click needs a little bit of a rest um, his uh, conditioning isn't quite as good as some of the others. So he comes out of the starting lineup. Other than that, it's a fairly full strength 11. Um, and because we are away from home, I'm hoping that for uh, the first half specifically, we can suppress the game a little bit. And this three man midfield seems to do that reasonably well. We're not overly prolific, but we're quite hard to beat when we get the personnel right and the tactics right. So we'll see what happens with that today. But it means that for today's game against Fulham in the Premier League, we've got Meslier in goal, Ailing at right back, Dallas at left back, Lorente and Koch in central defence, Wilshere, Phillips and Rodrigo in central midfield, Costa on the right, Harrison on the left and Bamford up top with a bench of Cooper, Jan Matt, Davis, Click, Rafina, Hernandez and Pazzini. So let's get into today's game and see what happens. I was quite determined in my uh, team talk before the game to absolutely make it very clear. I expect them to win today. I want them to go out there expecting to win and see if we can put some pressure on them to perform. So I clenched my fists and I shake them about a bit and I told them, go out there and get a win to keep our good run going. And we'll see whether that makes any difference at all today in terms of the performance that we get out of them. You know, Fulham, 16th place, uh, promoted with uh, Leeds United uh, in the previous summer. So uh, we've uh, got a recent history against them in the championship. This is an interesting stadium, isn't it? That seemed to be blocked up. They're doing some work, obviously. Um, so that's a, an interesting view. But we'll see how early on we can suppress the first half a little bit and then maybe open up in the second half. But we picked up a bit of a knock, it seems, to Phillips. Unfortunately, we're going to have to keep an eye on that and see if that increases as we uh, go through this first half of course again as is always the case and it drives me nuts at the moment of course our zoom function has been <laughs> messed about with because we closed the game down so let's put that back to where we want it to be um, and then we get a chance to counter attack with Harrison down the left hand side goes long early to Bamford but it's a little bit too long and the goalkeeper claims it for Fulham with no major problems and they get to reset themselves and come back at us. But Acosta nicks the ball, runs into the box and then a really wayward shot, wasn't it really? It was not good at all. Once he'd done all the hard work of getting into the box, putting it on target seemed to be on him at that point. But we've started brightly, a couple of chances. We've had four shots at goal and three on target, which is positive so far. Um, and we haven't conceded a goal, so not too bad a first half. You can see that we're up in terms of the XG ratings, but nowhere near enough getting a goal yet, unfortunately. Um, but let's go into the dressing room. 
and we'll say let's say we've been unlucky so far no gestures just a simple um, statement and then we'll come straight back out and we're gonna say we're gonna fire them up for the second half and see if that can g them up into providing us with a couple more decent goal scoring opportunities so far 60 minutes gone already that's flying through the second half and no highlights we're gonna to have to pause it there at 65 minutes and see what's going on and see if we can make a, a change or two Dallas is nervous Bamford is nervous we've got a 6.2 from Harrison which is unfortunate and not good enough he's the first one that comes out then having scored a couple off the bench recently Pazzini comes into the side um, and we're going to set him to poacher for this particular game uh, so he can play in that one. And where's the nerves? It was in Dallas. <laughs> Apparently in Dallas. Anyway, Davis comes on for Dallas and just sees if he can shore up that left-hand side. And we've got 25 minutes left of the game. Unpause the game and get going again. We've got 25 minutes left of it. And let's hope that we can actually find a way to find a route through to goal. If we can't, there's one other thing that I'll do in a second, but it's Fulham on the attack. And they've had a, a decent chance at a goal once, but they've kept the ball and worked it to the left-hand side again. And then Ailing tries to get a foot in, doesn't quite manage it, but a shot is blocked, for, uh, the cross is blocked from Wilshire, And we pick up the loose ball, but put it badly into a crowded Fulham midfield. Try again and get it to get it back and don't quite manage it. And they have a strike through on goal. 72 minutes gone. And the corner kick comes in. As soon as his corner kick is done, we're going to be making a change. And the corner kick gets partially cleared, but they pick it up again. Pause the game. We're going to go back into the tactics. We're going to go into the third of our tactical styles. And we're just going to switch these two players over. So Phillips goes back into midfield. And then we put Rodrigo up alongside um, Pazzini. And see if he can get a goal for us, leaving Phillips and Wilshire in that central midfield. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and we'll see whether that makes a difference in the last few minutes of the game. Um, and we are going to go on a attacking mentality. Come on, let me do it. Thank you. Uh, and just for that last sort of few minutes, see if we can chip and charge a little bit, get into the box and get an opportunity. And Ailing with a throw in, Costa takes over, but nearly loses out. Um, in that right-hand side area for us. And then they do lose out. Some wayward passing today. Really poor at times. Um, but we win it and then we give it back again. And that's the big problem we've had in this game. It feels like the passing. We're going to go and check that out in the analysis. The passing has not been good enough. And look at all of these low-conditioned um, players at the end of the game. We were out on our feet a little bit. We haven't been able to rotate as much as I'd have liked. But today was not quite as good a day as we would have liked, really. And eventually, we came away with a nil-nil draw. So as we go in and have a look at the analysis of this game, you can see immediately that the defensive line on the whole were very good with Phillips holding that central midfield together. Costa on the right had a couple of chance, uh, chances to impress down the right-hand side. The rest of the side were a little bit kind of meh. It was unfortunate, really. We had 11 shots at goal, eight on target, and none of them, and we played three different people up front in various formations, and none of them could get it, really, um, and challenge the goalkeeper enough. We had a, a, a XG of one, so we should have scored a goal, so should Fulham, and neither of us managed it, really. Disappointing. Let's go into more depth in the analysis. You can see in terms of the average positions, that on this particular occasion, Fulham held quite deep. Their attacking line was quite deep. But then maybe Bamford is getting a bit isolated. Maybe we need to shrink that down a little bit. There's gap here because we don't play a number 10 most of the time. Maybe there's an issue in that we'll have to sort out. But the defensive line was pretty decent. Although, again, maybe there is an issue in our fullbacks. Maybe they're pushing too much too quickly and we need to drop them back and create a more solid foundation for ourselves to work from. Maybe. I do quite like the fact that Dallas, um, what we've got here is number 10 and number 3. I think I'm sitting in this corner with my face. I hope you can see this. I can't. Can I enlarge it? Yes, I can. 
Nope, that's just the top one. I can't enlarge the bottom one. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is number 10 is our Metzala here. And he's often moving forward. And Dallas cuts in off of his left fullback um, role and cuts inside, underlapping, and just fills that gap that Rodrigo leaves. And so it remains three in midfield. And he can drop back into that fullback role if and when he needs to as well. So I quite like that. Maybe we haven't quite got the midfield around him working exactly as we need it to cover this area if he does drift too far away. But I quite like the underlapping fullback. And I haven't seen it work that well in previous versions of Football Manager. So that's not too bad. If we go and focus um, on our focus of attacks, you can see that on this occasion, let's just uh, click through here and back again. Will it give us both? It does give us both. It's black. I couldn't see it maybe. But we were in uh, the black, weren't we? I think it was our colour for today. And we worked primarily in the central midfield area and the, a bit on the left. It's not so much on the right. And that's a shame because that's where, if you remember, Costa was playing very well. And we probably, probably didn't make the most of that today, which is unfortunate. Maybe the, the, the play um, from central midfield went too readily to the left-hand side, maybe. I don't know, but that's something to think about um, as we move forward because when you look at the um, the stats of the individual players, if we go back to it, it all worked down this right-hand side and we didn't seem to make the most out of it today. And that's a little bit disappointing. Uh, in terms of shots, you can see that we both had a reasonable amount of shots, although none of us could get them really properly challenging the goalkeeper. We'll go and check out exactly how that worked in a second. Um, and it's, uh, again, it's Messier who's doing really well for us so far with a 7.5. What they've done for the ratings of goalkeepers this time around in Football Manager 21 is excellent. They've really upped their game. You can see he's got a 7.3 average rating. He's conceded 20 in 16. That's not too bad, but he's, he's kept six clean sheets and he's doing pretty well. Three player of the match awards for him as well. So he's a good goalkeeper, which is really great to see. So back into the analysis, let's go and have a look at the teams. And this is what we need to look at today. Passing seemed to be really bad today, to my mind, to, to what I was able to see. If we just go to our ones, the Leeds United passes, these are the intercepted passes. There's far too many of them. We need to shrink that down. We've got one blocked pass just on the edge of the box that would have caused them a problem, potentially. And then we've got 18 that weren't successful. Not bothered about these ones. These ones are clearing lines a little bit, so that's fine. It's these ones in here, getting it into that central penalty area kind of uh, position for our strikers to have a go. Wasn't good enough, obviously. And then one last stat is the out of play. And that's actually not too bad. Only 10 of them today. So there were some issues in our passing, but it was primarily in the intercepted ones today not good enough we have to make it more accurate the vertical ticky tacker should be short and sharp passes but no you know not making any major errors because they're quite structured and simple but it's not working out that way we had six key passes and then we couldn't quite make the most out of them could we so if we come out of the passing and go into the shots we'll see that three of them were off target how do you miss from the top of the six yard box Oh dear, that's frustrating, isn't it? None hit the woodwork. We had eight that were saved, but a lot of them were for long distance today. And that's another issue that we weren't obviously working the ball into the area enough, even though it is actually something that is um, listed as part of our play is to work it into the box. But yeah, it, it wasn't as successful as I'd have liked it to have been today. In the end, we came away with a nil-nil draw. It's another good point. It's another point in the Premier League, which is positive. But ultimately, against Fulham, you would have hoped for a slightly better performance and outcome than that. So what are we going to say? We're going to uh, point the finger and say, I'm not happy with that performance. It demotivated Wilshire and it created a bit of nerves. But most of them are motivated by that. And that's kind of what we want, really. Um, and we'll come back out of, of the match day scenario and just go and check in with the league table. It uh, puts us in eighth position after 16. You can see that Chelsea uh, and Wolves behind us have both got at least a game in hand over us. So that's going to close that gap up a little bit, which is unfortunate. Um, and directly above us, there's a couple that haven't played their 16 games either. So... Yeah, this looks like roughly where we're supposed to be at the moment in the sort of 8th through 10th kind of position. Let's see if we can maintain that through the rest of this season, though, um, and uh, see if we can maintain the, the 
pre-season thought that we would finish in about 10th position. But hmm, it's going to be tricky unless we can find our scoring boots. The other thing that I wanted to tell you about whilst the game is trundling through to the next section is that Pazzini has requested a transfer already. Not because he's unhappy with his playing time, but because there was a couple of Italian clubs that came in for him. If we go and have a look down here... Um, you can see that uh, Lecce is the one specifically that when they came in, he really wanted to move to them. I denied him the first round of um, when people came in for a, to try and to buy him. And by the second time, he'd kicked up a fuss and he was not worth keeping necessarily. We need to find a better option in the striking position. So I accepted a couple of other deals. If the Lecce, uh, um, if Lecce come back in, then he can go there as well. Looks like he's going to be out of here in the January transfer window, though. It'll free up some wages. Hopefully, that's enough to be able to get a loan player in. But we are down on the wages front a little bit, so that's going to be quite tricky. But that's all to figure out in the January transfer window. And through January, we've got a load of games to play as well. So January is quite packed in terms of activity. January transfer window will happen. We'll see whether we can do any wheeling and dealing in that. Uh, and we've got a packed schedule of Premier League matches and the FA Cup game. So a couple of games against Brighton to start the month off. Then we've got Leicester, West Brom, Everton and Liverpool to finish off January. That's a tricky run of fixtures with some big sides in there. Leicester, Everton, Liverpool you would think are going to be tricky to get results out of. But we did just beat Everton previously, so that's not too bad. And if we go back in the uh, the league, you can see that Leicester thumped us earlier in the season. So we might need to get a bit of revenge on them. The, the game that we're going to come back for, though, is the Liverpool match. Why wouldn't we? We're going to come back and play the reigning champions. And we'll catch up on everything that's happened in the January transfer window as well. Fingers crossed that we can do some business. I feel like if we don't, we might be a little bit lightweight up, uh, lightweight up front for the rest of the season, I think. So we do need to do something, but it might be quite tricky. Anyway, come back for next episode and join me for the Liverpool match. Uh, and we'll also check out what we've managed to do in the Jan uh, January transfer window. The finances of the club are looking decent overall. And we've got a little bit of transfer budget that maybe we can put into the wage budget, possibly. And if Pazzini goes, that will take 35 grand, I think, off the wage budget, possibly. So maybe there's some room for some uh, movement. But you'll have to come back next episode and find out. Until then, though, check all the links in the description below and go and check out all of my various um, activities around Twitter and Discord, etc. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click that like button for me. Help me get seen by lots of other people. Until next time, though. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.